Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. It's Chris again. It's Saturday morning, about 7. Uh, and we got a call last night from a good friend who um, um, basically was going over the mountains and during the time of uh, mountains that is Mount Hood in uh, Oregon, during the time that he was tra traversing or, tra you know, traveling, he noticed a broken down vehicle that needed assistance. So he made contact with that vehicle owner. And uh, of course the vehicle owner uh, was in need of uh, a tow service. So he referred us to that vehicle owner and that uh, Turn need right. last night. We arranged for towing this morning. Uh, so we're heading over to Mount Hood to rescue a box truck. A box truck that's full of or right. filled with piano equipment or pianos that uh, might or might not start or move. I not necessarily know all the mechanical conditions of this box truck that's up on top of the mountain. So um, at, at this time I'm actually in route. I couldn't get anybody else to get out there. Uh, I'm in route to our office to pick up um, to pick up uh, our um, medium-sized wrecker and uh, make uh, uh, I guess adjustments to uh, make certain that uh, we can haul this unit from the mountain downwards and then to its destination. So here we go. Keep. Uh, Keep watching and then uh, we'll put the rest of the video together here shortly. Okay, so now we're in a different vehicle. Um, we got with us our medium sized flatbed uh, that we're going to be using to go long distance, basically outside of our 50 mile radius. Um, and we're going to be uh, pulling behind us a uh, tilt flatbed that is going to be used to transport the broken down vehicle. So we're on our way now to uh, hook up the flatbed and get the flatbed hooked up to this vehicle so we can make the, uh, the drive over to Mount Hood, up and down the mountain essentially, without any concerns or any worries. So we're still on our way uh, at this point, um, just getting set up so we could uh, uh, I guess be a uh, be, be good use to these people when we get there. So uh, we got our winches uh, in place, our batteries in place. We got our our, our cables, our our uh, chains, our ratchets. We made certain that the straps that we've got, the D-links, uh, are good to go. There's no issues uh, when we get there. That we, we we also have chalk blocks with us in case we need those. Uh, we, have, we have our lights with us. Um, we just, we're pretty much all ready to go prepared. We may, you know, every time you get to this, you know, you never know what you expect when you get there because sometimes the vehicle that you're rescuing may have other issues. And, uh, you know, I've learned that if you're not prepared, if you don't plan out at least as much as you can think of, you know, basically think of all the elements that you might need to deal with. What, you know, jump starting the vehicle. Well, uh, the wheels don't roll. Well, we got winches, we can pull it up. Okay, check. Well, um, I don't know, the tires are completely flat and we can't strap them down properly, so we have to chain them down. Okay, we're checked with that. Okay, uh, maybe the vehicle caught on fire. Okay, um, those are some things that you know, sometimes you, you got to think outside of the box. So once you're prepared and you get all your equipment in place, um, at least as much equipment as you can think of, uh, then you can head on that direction. Uh, generally, we're prepared pretty much for anything except, uh, you know, over the mountain sometimes uh, we may encounter snow, ice, all those things. So that may be a little bit of a different um, measurement that we need to deal with. 
not at this time i don't think we are it's you know still september so we're not really going to expect snow but it comes down uh every now and then uh late september uh for sure so with that said stay tuned I'm here uh yeah a little bit uh up past uh timberline with this nice box truck here that's been carrying pianos uh we got a couple issues with it it's uh still a you know no damage to it, no body damage, no uh, steering damage, no no drive uh, tires damage. The drive tires are locked in place. The steering is free. Problem is, here's the problem. It's leaking fuel from underneath from uh, mechanical work that was done. It also has an electrical problem because last night it caught on fire partially. The gentleman that owns it, fixed it, took care of it, and he's been here since last night. As you see, there's been possible engine fire, electrical fire, and who knows what else. The unit is uh, about eight, maybe 9,000 pounds. I believe a 3,500 with the load that's on there, I'm estimating about 9,000 pounds. The question is, we got to get this thing up in the air onto the deck in reverse so we can when we get it down we got to get it with the nose where the customer wants so that's the number one thing we got to we got to winch it up the hill in reverse so we got to make preparations for that the other problem is it will not go into neutral it's still in park in in the park position and that's that means essentially we're going to be dragging it up on the ramp. And then uh, my concern is when we get it up on the ramp, you know, the, the bed, it will tilt and the weight from the rear distributing the weights onto the ramp, it's going to make the ramp tilt. And that means these tires are going to be uh, not catching. So I can't you know keep the ramp at the same time because it is hydraulic but that, i don't know the capacity of the weight and all that stuff so the only way to know is to actually get there um, once i get this set up there's no turning back so here we are on the freeway on 26. it's a beautiful day so why not let's get it let's give First it a try we did is we, we put reflectors to guide the traffic around us is that we are in reverse we're going to get additional cones that are going to go further out maybe uh 500 feet up backwards to uh mark our, our territory Perfect positioning. No. Okay, so what we got going, guys, 
We got a obviously a winch cable coming in with the J hook underneath the axle itself. I've got a safety chain just in case this thing uh, breaks free. Uh, chalk blocks in the front. The unit is not drivable. Not it rolls. It rolls because it was still in drive, so we can roll it. We got to exactly match the pattern of this deck, so it has to literally. The dualies need to be really close to the edges on both sides, so we got to line it up properly. That means the front steering needs to turn exactly. The customer wants it towed in reverse so we can get it down. Uh, so what we are doing now, the customer uh, is taking the fuel relay off because every time we put the key in the steering column, uh, it profusely leaks fuel. And that's a danger, a tremendous danger, uh, especially with it being on the on the bed with uh, sparks, with uh, you know, with uh, static electricity. So now we're going to test to see if the fuel still leaks. Um, the fuel re customer took the fuel re relay uh, out, and supposedly that will stop the pump. I'm assuming. I'm not very mechanically inclined, but uh, he's turning it on, or at least turning the pump or the and the the end the key on and i don't see any fuel leaking yeah so you want to take a look to make certain that that's what you did it's not leaking like it was because i didn't see it before right yeah it's so it's not good leaking anymore. okay good so we got no fuel leaking that means we can keep on going off the fuel stopped leaking now we're going to continue winching it up the hill, essentially the ramp in reverse. Got the safety chain here. Got the winch cable with the J hook. We're gonna continue pushing on this. Let's see if we can get it positioned exactly right. And now we're getting closer to that end. There. And every every so often you re reposition, you gotta take your time, reposition the safety chain just in case. depend on a safety chain whenever I'm working with the winch heavy vehicle and J hooks and winches that have uh, you know the capacity to pull it but if, if if for some reason something happens and this is in neutral well then you're stuck it's gonna roll right down so you gotta have at least one safety chain
Thank you for filming me, by the way. The customers filmed me for, for me. I appreciate that very much. So you guys, what we've done is we've used this 12,000 pound winch to uh, winch, the, winch this guy at an angle. You know, it's about eight, like I said, 8,000 pounds up on top of this ramp. Ramps up, uh, we uh, anchored it with another chain to make certain we have a safety chain. We got it all the way to the very top where we're gonna adjust it a little further in and then of course chain it down, strap it and get it on the, down the mountain from here. But right now, uh, safety chain, winch, J-hook, uh, all that in order to make it happen. You can see that, uh, you know, when, when you get something heavy like this up on top, you want to get it as far as the weight, you want to distribute the weight as far as you can all the way in the back because on the, on the tongue, because the tongue will support the weight and you want to distribute the uh, axles front of the weight. So the weight is between the axles and the unit that's pulling essentially on the tongue. So we need to get these tires all the way back here which will make that happen in short, short. Okay, so we got this thing strapped. Believe it or not, it took a long time to get it up on the bed because it's heavy, super heavy. It's probably way more than 9,000 pounds, but we got it up there positioned properly. Uh, we got the axles. Well, each wheel is chained down, wrapped. This is chained, that is chained. The back is chained, front is anchored, as well as we got obviously the back chain wrapped we got the back axle chained and the other side chained as well and we got us we got the wheel strapped as well down on both corners so you got two wheels strapped uh, we got a chalk block this direction just in case we didn't want it to touch the differential over there with that uh, winch plate so we want to make sure we got, a, we got that chalk block. And then we got a J hook wrapped around there to support it from sliding away. And then uh, you know, obviously now we put all of our tools away, but we're gonna head on out. It's a busy day today. It's a Saturday. We're gonna check the straps a little later on, but the vehicle's in park. Well, not really in drive. So it slides forward and back unless it's chained down and strap, which we got to chain. But the customer put the parking brake as well. Hopefully that holds something. But in between all that, I think we're good to go. Hey guys, so I'm here back with this vehicle. We just done, I just done, I took all the chains off, all the straps off. I'm about to lower it down and get it into position. They want it here on the curb at this uh, location. So all I got to do is get you know, the winch to uh, position the winch so that way the winch can actually uh, uh, guide it off because again, it has no power on its own and the brakes don't work and all that stuff. So we got to make certain that we get it down slowly and in the right position with care. So we're gonna be using the winch to do that. Well, once again, you guys, we got the unit off the uh, roll bed, trailer that is, safely parked on the side of the road here next to the commercial building they have uh, a need for. This was a uh, an easy tow, believe it or not, but a hazardous tow because it was leaking fuel from underneath. At any moment, that thing could have still lit on fire. But uh, we ended up taking, or the customer, took his fuel pump relay off and so he wasn't uh it wasn't leaking anymore and we uh we actually did something here to test to make certain that it wasn't actually dripping or leaking by putting the cardboard here directly under the spot and yes it did not leak believe it all this trip down uh from the mountains it did not leak any amounts of fuel so that means that it's not very dangerous whatever happened it caught on fire the engine the underneath the customer decided to put out the fire he was lucky because he had a fire extinguisher and he managed to put the fire quickly out before the rest of the engine caught on fire but uh, he had to endure that in order to save his truck so he used the fire extinguisher make sure you have a fire extinguisher 
at all times with you. And uh, you gotta react very quickly because when fuel catches on fire in a matter of seconds, it reaches the engine compartment. In this case, it didn't reach completely the, the fire that is. The fuel was continued drip, dripping. But the fire never reached the engine compartment and he was very lucky. He was able to put it out with a fire extinguisher and then call us. And yes, they called us last night. We managed to get to them and uh, we got them here safely. Um, you've seen we had chains everywhere. Uh, every, uh, both axles, every tire was chained down. Uh, the wheels were strapped. The unit was also secure from backwards and forward movement. Uh, it was winched downwards and it was winched upwards. The weight of this unit uh, is about 8,500 pounds, I estimate. Uh, it is full, so that's a little heavier, possibly a little heavier. I don't know for sure, but you know, I don't know what the interior tools and the equipment and the piano that he has inside there, what the weight of those units are, but I estimate it to be about 8,500 pounds. So this bed did amazing, uh, and uh, we've used it numerously for towing. Uh, uh, yeah, so the additional problem with this bed is that if it's wet outside, you got this diamond-plated steel, it's, it, slips, it's, it slips here. So yeah, you got these engraved, uh, you know, grooves that supposedly supposed to catch, but no, they don't really catch. They actually, uh, maybe a little bit, but otherwise this trailer is doing all right. Uh, this ends this call. Thank you for watching. Call us if you need us um, and uh, we'll do our best to save you or to rescue you or to help you or to guide you. And we're available 24 seven.